In my last video I spoke about seeing the invisible, doing the impossible. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 says, Since we consider not and look not to the visible things, uh, but rather to the invisible. So it says because the visible, they, they are corrupting, they are fading, but the invisible is deathless and everlasting. So Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, we shall not all die, we shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed. And he says, this mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on incorruption. So, so literally, he goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 5, that he doesn't want to put off the body, but he prays and he longs, he says, that he'll be further clothed with his heavenly dwelling. So to put on a heavenly dwelling, and it goes on to say, so that, so that what, is, what is mortal might be swallowed up by life. So I wonder if the church really believes what Jesus said when he said all things are possible. Uh, he who believes all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Uh, and now we're talking about controversial subjects like putting on immortality, not dying, taking death completely out of the equation. I want to go a little bit deeper because the church understands that kind of life doctrinally as to come or that kind of life as it's in heaven one day and I think so often we miss uh, we miss the promises we miss the benefits of the word because we we continue to postpone them for one day instead of possessing them so I'm going to share one of my all-time favorite scriptures I've seen so much results uh, by taking the scripture. Uh, John 4 35, Jesus says, Do you not say it's still four months until harvest time? Okay, so uh, according to this time period, it's still going to take four months until you get your harvest. But Jesus goes on to say, But I tell you, lift your eyes. You know, raise your eyes, lift your eyes, raise your eyes, observe the fields and see it's already ripe for harvest. So according to Jesus, there is a time factor, but He doesn't want us to live according to that. He wants us to raise our eyes and see the harvest already. So Genesis 8 verse 22, the Bible says, well God says, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and there'll be harvest. Okay, so, so right there what happened is, as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. Means that earth is subject to time. So there's a time frame for things to happen. First goes a seed and then in time, harvest comes. Alright, now if you go and you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, verse 1, very well known scripture. It says, there is a time and a season for every matter or purpose under heaven. It says, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time for harvest. All right, so under heaven, there is time. A time and a season under heaven. All right, so, so earth is subject to time. Above earth, heaven, there is no time. Okay, heaven is not subject to time. But on earth, there is a time to be born. On earth, there is a time to die. Then he goes on to say, a time to plant and a time for harvest. Now I want to remind you, John chapter 12, verse 24. Jesus says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, 
unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth or a seed falls into the earth and dies it remains just one but if it dies it yields a rich harvest much fruit so Jesus came the Bible says in the book of Galatians at the fullness of time he came at a time to be a seed to be the seed and, and, and he fell into the earth for the purpose of harvest okay so he came he appeared as man he appeared as one of us and and you know the great exchange on the cross he took our nature he died he put an end to that nature and he was resurrected the son of god openly designated um, and and that is the harvest so god's intention for god to love the world that he gave his only son meaning he gave his son as a seed uh, so he could in that nature and that we could reap his nature and become sons of God become the harvest so 1 Corinthians 15 says it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body okay so our only example of what the resurrection resurrected body is is Jesus interestingly the day that Jesus was was raised first person he met he says he tells the woman he says go to my brothers and tell them what they've seen you know up until that time Jesus was always called the disciples his friends but as soon as he was raised uh, he called them his brothers so remember now Jesus wants us to see the harvest so Jesus didn't die as a seed to produce more seed he died to produce the harvest so we have to take on the harvest now I was reading John 11 a story about Lazarus when he when he's raised from the dead so Mary and Martha sent a messenger out to Jesus to to tell him that Lazarus was was ill was sick and Jesus responds I think it's verse 4 he says this sickness is not to end in death but on the contrary it is to promote the glory of God Okay, now remember what we said 2 Corinthians 4 we look to the invisible because the the visible uh, it's fading away it is corrupting but the invisible is deathless and everlasting so then it goes on to say next verse Jesus loved him so much so he stayed on another two days so by the time that Jesus got there Lazarus was dead for four days already and I believe it was T.L. Osborne who said even if Jesus is four days late he's still on time all right but now Martha comes to him he says Lord if you were here my brother would not have died okay so so she goes on to say but even now I know that whatever you ask God he will give it to you so Martha came to Jesus in expectation for a miracle to happen now. Now Jesus' response was not the response that she was looking at, uh, looking for, because he said, your brother will rise again. This disappointed her because of the doctrine she believed or the, the doctrine she was taught. If you go read uh, John chapter 6 verse 40, Jesus said that it is the Father's will that whoever believes in the Son will have everlasting life. And he says, and I will raise him up at the last day. So back to John 11, uh, when Jesus said, your brother will rise again, she was disappointed. He said, I know he will rise on the last day. Now this is uh, the doctrine of the church concerning uh, the message of, of life, concerning immortality you know the promise the hope that we have so so he says your brother will rise again Martha replies I know you'll rise on the last day but here's where I get excited because Jesus' response was I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me although he dies he will live and whoever continues to live and believe in me will never die at all and he asks the question do you believe this so now the issue is time like I said seed time and harvest harvest is the resurrection 
okay? So she says, I know you'll arise at harvest time. Remember what Jesus said, you say it's still four months, but I tell you, raise your eyes, see the harvest. Jesus stands in front of him and says, yes, there's the resurrection. Yes, there's the last day. Your doctrine might, might say so, you know, um, but he says, hey, I am the resurrection. Now I am is present, is now, is, is his power and ability now. I am the resurrection. I am the whole time frame. So if you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, okay, the beginning and the end, which is, which was, and is to come. So is the time frame. Now remember, earth has a time frame. So is, was, and is to come. Uh, everything that Jesus was, right now I'm standing here, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was crucified. I know He is seated right now at the right hand of God. And I know He is to come. This is time frames. But then He says, I am. So I am is in heaven where there is no time. And it's always present power now. Earth, seed time and harvest. He who believes, he who believes, although he dies, he will live. Okay, and he who continues to live and believe will never die at all. I'll ask you the question again, is all things possible or not? Okay, so right now, at this present moment, all things are possible. All right, why? Because I am the resurrection. I am the life. So do you realize that Martha had a good doctrine to excuse herself from receiving the miracle? Right there, Jesus is present, okay? But her doctrine, he will rise on the last day, could be her excuse why he should not get the miracle. I think we, we, can, we can excuse ourselves from miracles, from our doctrines. So fast forward to verse 39. Jesus says, take away the stone. Now when Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha said, by this time, he stinks already. Okay, so that's experience. So experience, will we'll also excuse you from receiving a miracle because you already know what's impossible. You already know what's impossible di doctrinally and you already know what's impossible uh, by experience. But Jesus' response, He said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? How many guys know that, that seeing is not believing? Believing is seeing. If we can believe, we will see the glory of God. Then one of the most awesome parts in the story, the Bible says, Jesus lifted up his eyes, looked to heaven and he said, Father, thank you that you have heard me. All right, how awesome is that? Jesus tells us, lift your eyes, see the harvest. So when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he looked away from the time frame. He looked away how things are supposed to work, seed time, harvest, and he saw the harvest. And then he, it's the Bible says he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says that out came Lazarus, the man who was dead for four days. I love what, um, I think it was Kenneth Copeland, uh, he said, I believe it was him, he said, if Jesus did not say Lazarus, he would have emptied out the whole graveyard, but he had to specify. So uh, yeah, Lazarus came forth. John 5, Jesus said, I tell you, a time is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and they will live. Uh, you know, Hebrews 12 says, now faith is. There is a time and it's always now. Okay, now I am a present time. Now, when the dead will hear the voice of God. But he says a time is coming, so there is an appointed time, but there's another time and it's now. And by faith we can access now. By faith we can walk into things before, uh, before it's appointed time. So Romans 6 verse 13, he tells us to live like you've already been raised from the dead. To believe like you've already been raised with the dead. Uh, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 6 says you've been raised in heaven. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 says our conversation is in heaven. So many only have faith to go to heaven. 
okay? But there has to be a generation that has faith to manifest heaven, to manifest that life, to, to think with God's thoughts, to think with the mind of Christ um, and literally rule. How else can miracle signs and wonders uh, make sense? Healings, heal the sick, raise the dead. We have to take on a different mentality. So Jesus said, do you not say it's still four months until harvest time? But I tell you, lift your eyes, raise your eyes, observe the fields and see it's already harvest time.